My name is Nick Brokaw. I'm an ecologist. I've been studying forests in Puerto Rico since 1989. I recently retired from the University of Puerto Rico, where I was a professor. I also work in Belize, Central America, where climate drying is threatening the rainforest. I've known Von Hartung for 15 years. In that time, I've learned a great deal from his art and from his Christian care for the environment. Look at Vaughn's sculpture, Eve and Adam, Forbidden Fruit. In this sculpture, you see Eve and Adam surrounded by the fruits of the earth that sustain humanity. But you also see the environmental problems created by humanity. Sure, we need science to create solutions to environmental problems. But we also need art to depict the biggest problem, the human problem the human problem of using the earth while still sustaining it. Thank you, Nick. Nick and Sheila are gifted scientists who are working here and in Central America to save our forests. When we got slammed with the news of the COVID-19 virus and that the world was coming to a halt, I realized that I needed to do a carving. Soon after, we learned through science, that is, through satellite images, that the atmosphere was clearing up, that the rivers and the streams and they were see, being able to see fish in the canals of Venice, which hadn't happened for hundreds of years. I thought, and I prayed, and I came up with a theme, because although carving grounds me like it would be like building a boat, or like a lightning rod, and didn't know how long we would be uh, locked in, also, I wanted to do a theme that would hold my attention and point to the situation that the world community and our Mother Earth was, were, was in because of this microscopic germ. So I realized that we were in a garden moment, a garden like the Garden of Eden. Now the three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity believe in Genesis. And Genesis was the Garden of Eden, the story of the Garden of Eden. It's a metaphor. What it meant was that you could have anything in the garden except the one thing. That represented a edict from God. There are things that we shouldn't do. So I realized the parallel between the old story and the new story of the garden. But this time it isn't Adam and Eve only. It's Eve and Adam. Because as you can see, Eve is with child. So they represent all of humanity and a, new, a possible new start. And the fetus, okay, is a symbol of future generations. And yes, they are naked, but you know what? We're naked. We like to think we're something we're not, depending on what jeans we put on, or what gown we put on, okay? or what hat we put on, but we're really just who we are. One of many species of mammals that inhabit the earth. The difference is, is that we have conscience. We have the ability to discern between just habit and to be able to plan, to look back in history, to understand that what we do have consequences. What are those consequences? If you 
put your hand over a flame, you're going to get burned. So you realize you can't do that. If you put a lot of carbon into the atmosphere now from the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, including all the natural disasters that have been, that have happened, like volcanoes and forest fires, etc., etc., you have a situation, you have built a dome that keeps in the heat. So, we have produced this. Every morning when I wake up, I can hear a roar, and it's cars coming from the country to go to the city to go to work. And they're going to go home again. And I realize that every time the earth turns, that people and cars all over the globe are doing the same thing. And they're putting carbon, diox carbon uh, dioxide into the atmosphere. And that's accumulating up there. So, what is it? Our Garden of Eden, we know from, through science, because God gave us intelligence, okay? We know what's going on. So, we are either going to heed what God says, which science says, or we're not. We're going to be as Adam, and he disobeyed. So Eve, as you can see, is cautioning Adam. What, is, what are you thinking, Adam? Adam is being tempted. Because as we can see in the tree, those are not ordinary apples. These apples are strange. They don't look edible. And look at the leaves. The leaves in this metaphor, in this work of art, have changed from the beautiful leaves that collect chlorophyll, give, help the tree grow. They've changed into 2020 denomination dollar bills. 2020, 2020 on each leaf, because that's the year that we were in when this sign, I believe, from the, our Creator says, Hey, slow down. This is what you need to think of. How did you get to this point? What are the consequences? And where are you going to go in the future? And Adam is thinking about that. He's being tempted. As you can see, he has a monkey on his back who's whispering in his ear. And over here, you have a prophet from, from the Old Testament and from the New Testament about don't blasphemy. Don't go against God like Lucifer did. And Adam in the Garden of Eden, what did he do? He wanted to break the rule. He wanted to be more like God. The captains of industry, the captains of our economic system, don't they want to be like God? Don't they want to be like God's? But the mothers of the world need to be listened to. Ooh, the serpent. The serpent is crawling out of the tree, whispering, in Adam's other ear. And the serpent is tattooed with the same markings on the 2020 denomination dollar bills. Now what does the carving represent? To me, the carving represents a tomb or a skyscraper, a tower, if you will. A tower. A tower of Babel. A tower of industry, of a certain type of economics that are predatory on nature. So, it may be entombing us as a species and endangering planet Earth, our common home. Now, Pope Francis wrote about this in Laudato Si. 
And this is my main encouragement of hope for the future. And I am a subscriber to the science, the theology, and the common sense that goes into Laudato Si. We have a blueprint for getting back in harmony with our Creator, with nature, and living in balance. If not, like down here, we have God's natural gifts. We have platanos, bananas if you will. We have papayas. We have melones, our key, okay? Mangoes, etc. These are all God's gift to us, free. And think of all the vegetables and all the animals in the world that God has given us. But he also gave us a rule. Don't do this. Don't eat these apples. Don't choose this future. Because down here we can see the dodo bird. Now, I read a lot about the dodo bird because the name intrigued me. Then I read it went extinct. Then I read it went extinct because it had no fear of humans. It had never encountered humans. And humans were as tall as they were. These birds were five feet tall. Five feet tall. And weighed about 50 pounds, 60 pounds, the adults. They're related to the common uh, city pigeon. Okay, doves. And here came these seamen. They lived on an island called Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. And these sailors were intrigued by these birds that did not run away. They showed no fear. Sooner than later, they killed one and ate it and found that it was very delicious. So what happened? The dodo birds followed the command of the sailors and got on the ships. Ship after ship after ship after ship and eventually they went extinct. There are other theories, for example, that rats got off the ships and ate their eggs, etc., etc. But the point I'm making is that we have a great impact on nature, on natural life. So let us think about that. 